Hi, welcome to Troubadour's videos. I've been receiving a lot of messages from you YouTubers asking me what is the best CPU water block to put in your system, especially if you're going to be overclocking like crazy. Well, as it happens today, we're going to be running a benchmark review using five of the PC industry's most radical and extreme water blocks. We're going to be loading those into the crisis cruncher, overclocking a 4.4 gigahertz, and slamming those things with 100% load and see what test results we get. So, please enjoy the benchmark. These are the extreme CPU water blocks we're going to be checking out today in our benchmark test. Starting in the top left corner, we have the DTEC Fusion V2 Extreme. Then we have the Coulant CPU 340, the EK Supreme water block, the Danger Dan MC TDX, and lastly the SwiftTech Apogee GTX Extreme Copper Cap Edition. Let's check out some of the other hardware we have in the cooling loop today. This is the Coolant RP1000BK. It's a five and a quarter reservoir and pump bay kit. Pumps around 135 gallons an hour and um, has three temperature sensors and a built-in fan controller. This is the Alpha Cool LC display on the Crisis Cruncher. It's going to be interacting with fan speed software today to give us our CPU overclock, our temperature readings, as well as our CPU usage. Great piece of equipment. This is the Coulant's radiator, it's the EHX1020BK, it's a dual pass with uh, three 120mm fans. And here's inside the computer, behind the water block there is the Intel QX9770. We have our DDR3 memory by Patriot. It's all of course mounted on the XFX790i motherboard which is fantastic for overclocking. And we got our one video card there, it's the EVGA GX2. And it's all powered up by a Thermaltake Tough Power. We're going to be using Cinebench 10 to put 100% load on those CPUs today. As, uh, as I said, the, we have a clock them to 4.4 GHz and uh, that gives us 53 seconds in Cinebench. And here's the first contender, this is the EK Supreme water block. This is an absolutely beautiful piece of equipment. I've fallen in love with it. The build quality is, is outstanding. Uh, it's a very, very low profile water block. So if you're going to use this one, make sure you've got a very powerful pump to get that liquid through there. Uh, very, very thin copper heat plate on there. EK's uh, interpretation is that they wanted a very thin heat plate to pass that heat to the fluid with a minimum distance to travel. So let's see how she does under idle conditions. Uh, pretty good. 40, 36, 36, 40. Those are very reasonable temperatures considering the overclock. Uh, under load, 55, 50, 49, 52. Again, very reasonable temperatures. This is running very hot. It's, it's overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz. So that CPU is pumping out a lot of heat right now and very good temperatures. And our second contender is the Coulant CPU 340. Uh, some of you guys should be very familiar with this type of water block. This is some of the ones that I have used in my previous videos. It's a very, very capable piece of equipment. Solid copper heat plate, brass cap, nice nickel finish to make it corrosion resistant. Um, fits in the case very well. Does have a universal mounting plate so you can mount it on any type of CPU assembly or socket realistically. 775, 771, you name it. Let's see how she runs in the test. Idle conditions, 40, 36, 36, 40. Pretty reasonable temperatures. Uh, I think this one's going to cut the mustard with the big guys here. It's going to run with the big dogs. And the load, 55, 50, 51, 53. Again, very similar story. Uh, the CPU water block from Coulant is very, very capable. I'm, I'm impressed. Very nice piece of equipment. And the third contender is Danger Dan's MC TDX water block. Uh, fantastic piece of equipment, looks very well engineered. This one comes with the brass cap as opposed to the acrylic cap, but it has a 100% copper uh, heat plate on the base of it, and apparently has 240 heat dissipating columns. Not quite sure what that does for performance, but we'll check it when we run it on the benchmark. But um, installs very easily on the motherboard, no hassle at all. 
Oh, that yeah, that that's running a little warmer than I would have thought under idle conditions. 41, 37, 37, 41. That's the hottest run in idle so far. Uh, and the load, similar story. 58, 51, 52, 56. Uh, this is the hottest water block so far. Very disappointing. And this is the fourth contender. This is the DTEC Fusion V2 Extreme water block. I heard a lot of you guys raving about this one out there, so this was a must-have on the test. But i got to say I'm very, very impressed with it. We installed the uh, mid-chamber insert kit uh, to optimize it for quad-core performance. It, it seems to be very, very well made. as 100% copper base plate, and it actually has a Delrin top uh, that's embedded with a couple of uh, brass threaded inserts uh, for the nozzles. So overall, very well-built quality. CPU idle temps, 40, 36, 36, 40, 41. Um, very reasonable idle temps. Uh, very consistent with some of the other ones so far. And the load-in, completely different story. Uh, 54, 48, 51, 51. This block is the cooler so far. It is absolutely sucking the heat out of that CPU. Phenomenal. This one, I think, is going to win. And the final contender is Swiftex Apogee GTX Copper Cap Extreme Performance Water Block. This piece of equipment is very well engineered and designed. Uh, what's interesting here is they actually designed a curvature or a bow on the CPU cooler heat plate, claiming that it's fully tweakable. And uh, I know, a fantastic idea, but it's fully tweakable. And you can adjust the flatness of the CPU cooler by adjusting the tension screws that hold it onto the motherboard retainer. Let's see how it does under tests. Uh, idle, 41, 37, 37, 42. Uh, not bad idle temperatures. Let's see how she rates under loading. 56, 51, 49, 53. Not the best temperatures. Uh, certainly by no means the worst. I think this is a very capable piece of equipment. And here's the final results. Let's have a quick look. Uh, the DTEC Fusion V2 come in first place. The EK Supreme come in second. Joint third was the Coulant's CPU 340 and the SwiftTech Apogee GTX Copper Cap. And in the last place was the Danger Den MC TDX. Well, I hope you enjoyed that benchmark review. One of those pretty interesting results, though, uh, considering five of the industry's top leading water blocks, the most extreme water blocks on the planet right now, are only separated by a total of four degrees C when they're under full load. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, each and every one of those water blocks are extreme in their own right. All very, very good quality crafted pieces of equipment. But here is the ultimate leader. This is the DTEC Fusion V2 Extreme Water Block. It does have the quad core mid chamber nozzle inserted in there, so this is optimized for quad core performance right now. The best you can get on the market. DTEC Fusion V2 is 100% Troubadour approved. Thank you again for watching Troubadour's videos. Uh, I hope you did enjoy this benchmark video. Once again, I'd like to thank all my subscribers out there for subscribing and giving me feedback and comments. However, if you do enjoy watching these videos, please feel free to subscribe, uh, post a few comments, and let the world know your thoughts and feelings, especially on CPU water block performance. So thank you again, and take care.